if we talk about uh, you know some of the pluses of this innovation and, and rate of change within technology and you know certainly the access to the knowledge that the internet provides us is, is fantastic uh, these devices allows us to uh, they're very adaptable to our modern life so if I'm uh, if I'm on the go, if I'm at home, if I'm just needing to do something quite quickly if it's on a smaller device right through to, to other devices, they're very adaptable. Uh, and they allow me to do things pretty much wherever I want them to do. That's the whole sort of, um, you know, the dream of, of a wireless world. A lot of people though, sort of, I guess, in terms of sort of some of the downsides of, of what technology innovation has done, particularly, you know, I guess with, with, uh, with younger people, you know, you could argue and you guys probably know this, uh, you know, well, either know this or can dispute this quite well, but, you know, certainly people's uh, perception of there being a, a shortening of attention span because we're now conditioned to sort of just consume information and, and, uh, and interact with people in short, very short bursts. And you look at the sort of the, the time of engagement on mobile uh, apps and websites, you know, you, it's it's a lot lot shorter than uh, if you're sitting down at a at a desktop or at a laptop. So people are performing tasks, communicating with each other, being engaged with whatever that might be in blocks of kind of 10 to 30 seconds, and then putting the device away and going and doing something else. Or as my daughters quite often demonstrate, they multitask <laughs> and they, they're doing their homework and they're Snapchatting with their friends and eating their dinner or whatever that might be. Um, privacy has certainly become something that uh, you know has become thrust more and more into the spotlight as these types of devices have evolved uh, in, in terms of not just the information that we post about ourselves, that we share about ourselves, but um, you know right through to kind of like the prison program, um, NSA spying controversy that's out there and, and uh, you know current affair have got no shortage of stories about how your photos are geotagged and people can work out where your kids go to school and that type of thing. So a lot of questions that have uh, been thrown up and, and in some cases not a lot of answers provided uh, because the, the powers that be within that technology and innovation space are much more uh, interested in just making sure you buy the next device than actually answering some of these fundamental questions that get raised. Uh, does anyone know what FOMO is? Tim, the fear of missing out. It's kind of like in that, you know, YOLO, you know, you only live once. They call them FOMOs, the fear of missing out. It's why you check your phone every 15 seconds. Has someone emailed me yet? Has someone responded to my, my post yet? How many likes have I got on that photo? You know, you're pulling it out. You don't even wait for it to beep anymore. You don't even wait for the for the alert to go off. You just pull it out, checking it. Um, it's actually a you know it's a that's a social change that that has come about that didn't uh, well certainly wasn't as prominent uh, in years gone by. But now even away from devices, the behaviour of wanting to stay in touch with everything that's going on and wanting to know it's actually being driven by some of this technology. Uh, and of course, language. You know, and, and again, my, my daughters provide an endless number of uh, of, uh, of stories and references for for talks like this. But um, you know, the the fear around text messaging was that it was going to you know destroy the English language because people were typing lol and, and that type of thing. And I, whether it's destroyed it or not, I don't know. I think it's spawned off a whole new, or certainly a whole new parts of the dictionary. But uh, you know. When you see devices, and that, that's purely a, a technical or technology-driven change to something as fundamental as the way we speak and the words that appear in a, in a, in a dictionary um, are there because somebody decided that an SMS was only going to take 160 characters or Twitter decided that you needed to squash that down into 140 characters. So some fundamental social changes coming out of, uh, something out of this technology. Right, so my last lesson. It's all about the kids, and uh, and I see this becoming more and more part of, uh, particularly here in Brisbane, the digital strategy that the city of Brisbane has been put together uh, over the last year and is now implementing in various different ways. There's a lot of focus on the kids and what they're doing and leveraging those guys within this within this uh, this new world. So who's actually driving this bus, this technology and innovation bus? Is it these guys? It used to be. It used to be that they were kind of the gatekeepers of 
technology and certainly the, con the connectivity that those devices relied upon. Uh, but those guys are no longer in, in control. Is it these guys? For a large proportion of it, yes. They're the ones who are developing the services, who are building some of the fundamental building blocks uh, that, hot, that live behind some of the services that, uh, that we might be consuming and enjoying. Uh, it's actually running on, on technology or running uh, on services that these guys are, are putting into the, the actual underlying infrastructure of the internet. But uh, you know, these guys will find it harder and harder as well to, uh, to, to be in control. Uh, a lot of people think it's, it's these guys and certainly for a large proportion of, uh, of the population, they are very much front of mind. These, these are the, the guys who provide me with the tools and the ways to, to communicate with my friends, to, to know what's going on. Uh, they're very, very influential. Um, certainly the media in terms of promoting where things are headed and, and what are the right things to be using. Uh, you know, I think this movie was actually sort of the, the internship, I don't know if anyone's seen it. Uh, one of the best pieces of product placement that I've seen in years. Forget about you know, the star of the TV show firing up his new Windows 8 phone to, make, you know, to dial the police and the TV show. You know, these, this, this was product placement at, its, at, a, at a super high level. Uh, again, to, to influence uh, the generation that are making these decisions. So, yeah, I do think a lot of it is about the kids. And, we, and this term techpreneur, so an entrepreneur within the technical world, um, you look at the, the age of these guys that are coming down. Now, I was talking with um, a couple of my mates before over lunch, talking about, uh, well, you know, Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, you know, they're my age, not my age, one of the guys I was speaking to. Yeah, they're my age and look what they did because they were in the right place at the right time. Um, guys who are my age just exited or just, just IPO'd Twitter and made themselves $3 billion overnight and they're my age. Look what they've done. This guy sold his company to Yahoo for $60 million or something like that. He's only 18. So, the, so where the innovation and where the, the thought leadership is coming from in terms, of, in terms of innovation and technology is coming from a group of people where the, the, age, the average age is starting to, certainly starting to shrink. So it's really these guys that we're, that we're looking at now in terms of understanding, well, this idea of the, well, this, this idea economy, who are the people who are coming up with that next idea? Who are the people who are deciding look, it's great that, you give, that I can do that particular task in that way, but I really want to do it this way. So how do I do that? Because if I can work out how to do that, then it's going to make my life better. And for a lot of these guys, they say, well, then it's also going to make a lot of other people's lives better and I can make some money out of that. I don't think it's quite these guys just yet, but it's not going to be too... Uh, they're, they're certainly starting early. One of the, um, one of the great initiatives in Brisbane... Uh, that I've been fortunate to be a part of uh, has been a thing called Coda Dojo. Has anybody heard of Coda Dojo? Yeah, so it's, um, it's kind of like uh, Code Academy that was mentioned before, but kind of face-to-face. -face. So uh, as part of uh, Brisbane City Council or, or uh, Brisbane Marketing's uh, digital strategy for the city of Brisbane, part of it was to run free clinics uh, and workshops in various uh, council libraries. Uh, and they would get mentors from the industry to come in and work with kids between the ages of 6 and 15 and teach them how to write code. Uh, but teach them in a way that was, you know, they were making games or they were making, they basically sort of gave them the tools and sort of said, well, what do you want to build? What would you like to, what would you like to do? And, you know, of course, some kids says, I want to make Facebook. But they want to, you know, they start off with a maze game. You know, and, they, and there's some tools that, that, uh, that they were able to sort of put in front of them, things like Scratch, uh, from MIT that allow them to sort of start to explore the idea of I've got something in my brain, how do I get it out onto the, onto the screen or onto, you know, onto the phone? Uh, and then some of the fundamental building blocks of, of code and programming. And so one of the great things was, you know, within the, within the crowd, you've got these guys from industry. Uh, in, this, in this particular photo, you've got um, 
entrepreneurs, you've got game developers, programmers, uh, IT managers, all giving up some time on a Saturday to have these kids come in. But the really cool part about Coda Dojo was that the next crop of kids that showed some real kind of talent and some real interest, they became the mentors as well. They got a, they got a Coda Dojo polo shirt and the next week they came along, it was about kids teaching kids. So they were the ones who were empowered. So from their perspective, you know, there's some, there's some great um, uh, development being made for them personally as well as um, from, a, from a technical perspective. But the whole idea of Coda Dojo was to inspire kids to write some code but then get kids to teach kids. And, uh, and so that was a great example. We had some guys come in, um, local game development studio here called Half Brick, made the game Fruit Ninja, which I know a lot of people will know. You know we've got access to people within Brisbane who can come along and really inspire our kids uh, to, to go to the next level with their, their learning in this new idea economy and giving them the right tools. So just to wrap up, The future of technology is moving very, very quickly to the extent where originally I was going to talk to you about mobile, but then I realized, you know what? Mobile's kind of done. We're past that. It's here. It's, it's, it's very much here. Uh, but that rate of change is, is happening uh, very quickly. The changes that it brings uh, impact us in greater ways each time. So mobile, yes, impacted us immensely. Um, cloud, in many ways, many unseen ways, uh, has impacted us in even greater, uh, in even greater ways. You think about something like wearable technology. How is that going to impact us as people? Um, so the change that each of these waves bring uh, impact us with, with greater scale each time. I think it's really important that we watch and learn from the natives who are part of this this idea economy, this ch these change natives who are growing up extremely used to, to change. I look at my, my parents and how my, you know, my dad worked for the public service for 40 years, got his gold watch. You know, I'm the next kind of one along the line. At least I went and studied and got a degree in something. Uh, and I've sort of stuck in the one industry area, but, you know, I, I've, I've changed, I sort of change jobs every. I don't know, three years, something like that. You look at my kids, well, I look at my kids, and 80% of the roles that they're going to be applying for or that are going to be available to them don't even exist yet in terms of, a, you know, she's in high school. When, by the time she finishes uh, university, 80% of the jobs that'll be th that, that she'll be, that are in, that, um, in her sort of sphere of interest, they, they don't even e exist yet. So those change natives are really important for us to, I guess, hook into in terms of how they're learning, what they need to learn, what they would like to see, and how they can utilise their own ideas from their experiences with technology to, to bolster that. Um, so I think listening to their ideas uh, is, is critical. Watch and learn. Thank you very much.